Good afternoon Year 4 and in today's topic lesson we are going to be doing some art. We are going to start our learning journey on what did the Romans do when people rebelled. This part of our topic is going to take a couple of sessions and during these sessions we are going to look at what was life like under Roman rule, why did people rebel, who was Boudicca and what are our perceptions of her and what was the impact of the rebellion. Now there are going to be some key uh, vocabulary that's going to be referred to throughout this part of our topic. The first key vocabulary is the word rebel. Now a rebel is a person who fights against or is not loyal to the government of his or her country. <coughs> so if you remember the Romans were the people who governed our country. A rebellion is an armed fight against one's government. It's an uprising. Understand why people would rebel against Roman rule. We need to think about what life was like under Roman rule. So in 61 CE, most Celtic tribes were living in peace with the Romans. They had kept their way of life and most of their lands. Now, the first thing we're going to do is actually look at these statements and you are going to group them into what the Celts provided for the Romans and what the Romans provided for the Celts. To sort into the two headings, what the Celts provided the Romans and what the Romans provided the Celts. So I've started to sort some of these out. We can trade shops in their markets. So the Celts could actually sell things to the Romans. And then the Romans, they would bring things such as olive oil to the empire. So they would trade with those. Uh, to move the card, so you just click on it and drag it to the place. So I think that the Celts were able to provide people for the army for the Roman army. Remember a couple of weeks ago we learned that the Romans uh, recruited people from the lands that they conquered. They would pay them and after 25 years of service they could become a Roman citizen. So I've put that one under there. So you go to the statement and then you drag it to the place, the heading that you think it belongs to. Do that first. Celts provided the Romans with shops and markets, so goods that could be sold and bought from the Romans. They provided people to join their army. And the Celts also provided people, such as servants or craftspeople, who would work for the Romans. <coughs> the Romans, in turn, brought goods such as olive oil and finer cloth called linen, and people were able to, the Celts were able to wear those during the summer when it was cold. The Romans also provided uh, roads. They built roads so it was safer to walk across the land. Uh, the Romans also bought the iron that the Celts had um, mined and this provided them with money. The Romans would buy bread from the Celts as well to feed their army and in return the Romans would actually protect the Celts from any attacks from other tribes that they may have. They bought the wool from the Celts to clothe their um, soldiers. They brought things like wine to the country of Britain and they sold this to the Celts and they also bought the meat from the Celts. So there were reasons why the Romans actually helped the Celts. Uh, and this was one of the reasons why the Celts and the Romans did live in peace. However, some people did not like all the support that the Romans gave. 
and they didn't like what the Romans were doing to their land. Now, these people began to rebel and we're looking at one of these rebellions and the rebellion that was led by Queen Boudicca. Did anyone wish to rebel against the Romans? They provided roads, they provided protection against other tribes, they bought goods that you had made or what you had mined. So why would they want to do that? So not everyone felt that the Romans were being fair. Lands had actually been taken from the Celts and they were treated by some Romans unfairly. One such Roman, uh, one such Celt that was uh, dealt with unfairly was the Celt queen called Boudicca. Now, Boudicca lived in the area known as Iceni and she was the queen of that tribe. Now, today, that's uh, based in East Anglia. And during 60 to 61 CE, she led a revolt against the Roman rules. Now, you are going to have a look at some of the representations of what the Celtic Queen looks like. And I want you to think about what these representations tell you about the Celtic Queen what impressions do you have of her? So here is an artist impression of Boudicca. She has, she's seen here with red hair, with um, tattoos across her face. She's got a spear in her hand. Uh, she was riding a horse. So what sort of impression does this give to you about Boudicca? Now, when I look at this, and I want to hear about your impressions as well. When I look at this, I see a very strong woman. Uh, and the reason why I think she's strong is because she's carrying a spear. So that also tells me that she's trained in combat because she does have a spear. I think she's wearing tattoos, tattoos, uh, because she wants to look fierce. And that's the impression that I get from this artist. So I see a very strong person. She's trained in combat. She's got tattoos which show her looking fierce. Now, I want you to pause the video and on your slides, I want you to tell me what the artist impression is of Boudicca here. Here are some other paintings drawn and painted by other artists of the Queen Boudicca. Take a look at each one. What does that image make you feel about the Queen? what do you think she was like and then when you've looked at each one in the box that has been provided tell me how your impressions of Boudicca just based on the images and finally this is a bronze statue of Boudicca and her daughters and this was sculpted in 1850 a long time after Boudicca had died and you can see it on the banks of the river Thames what does this sculpture tell you about Boudicca a lot of what we know about Big Queen Boudicca has actually come from sources that were written by Romans at that time any descriptions that we have or any images that we have actually come from Roman times. And these sources have helped artists create images of what the queen might have looked like. But as you realised, each of the paintings are very different. And that's because it is an artist's point of view. Now, before we learn even more about Boudicca and her revolts, 
we're actually going to have a go at painting and sorry at drawing our own uh, version of what we think Boudicca looks like and we're going to actually be creating sculptures today on google classroom i have put a recipe for play-doh that you can make at home with ingredients that can be found in your kitchen cupboard don't forget to ask your parents permission but you will need to make your own play-doh to help you make a sculpture of buddhika and now i'm going to actually show you steps that you can take in order to help you draw your own version of buddhika using pencil Before we begin our main drawing, the first thing I want to show you is two techniques that will help you not only with drawing but also shading with your picture. Now the first technique I'm going to show you is called hatching. Now with hatching what you're doing is strokes of your pencil. I'm doing it in pen so you can see. So you might do long strokes you might do shorter strokes this is called hatching and this will help you when you're actually doing your shading and another technique is called cross hatching now with cross hatching it gets its name because you start off with a hatching stroke where you do long short strokes and then you go in the opposite direction forming a cross like so now, I want you to do both of these techniques when you are doing your drawing today. So let us begin. So the first thing you are going to need to do is to actually draw the outline of Boudicca's face. And on your slide, you do have a picture of Boudicca. So draw an outline. So if I look at my outline, it's quite, it's like an egg shape. It's quite round at the top, quite rectangular at the bottom, like so. So I'm going to start actually by doing that. And I'm going to do short strokes. Now they do overlap each other. And the reason for that is, and it's quite fake lines, you can just about make my lines out. So when you're actually drawing, you should be doing lines that are quite faint because it makes it easier for you to rub out. So here's my face outline. It's quite rectangular, if you remember, at the bottom. I'm just going to do it heavier so you can see but normally I would do quite light lines so I'm going to kind of have her hair kind of flicked there so I'm just doing the outlines of some of her hair and she's got kind of a wispy bit here I'm just going to add that. So it's quite faint lines. It's not accurate. You won't get it accurate straight away. So if you notice, here's the actual drawing. And there's my version as well. Okay. Okay, so it's not accurate. Now, the next step I'm going to notice is that her eyes are about the third of the way down. So I'm just going to kind of mark off what I think is about a third on my face. And I'm just going to draw very faint line there because i can rub that out later so i'm going to have her eyes here and her mouth is quite near the bottom of her chin here so i'm just going to do an outline and if you notice that part of her hair is like a diagonal line to her lips so i'm just going to kind of put a line just there so i know that's where her lips are going to be and her nose is quite long actually so it goes from the base of her eyes about here and it so it starts off about here the top of her nose and it finishes to about there so i've just kind of pinpointed where each of her features is so now i'm going to actually do her eyebrows 
So they're kind of semi-oval like so. So I'm doing this hatching technique to actually shade in her eyes like this. And it's okay to go over it several times because it's okay to make mistakes in art. And then I'm going to do these oval eyes like this. Again, I'm doing this hatching stroke, so it helps me with just doing long and short strokes. Okay, and then I'm just going to do these hatching movements to do the, the kind of shading that's going underneath her eyes like that. I'm doing short lines. I think I'm going to have to do some hatching, cross hatching, so it makes it darker. I'm going to do the same the other side. I'm just going to do, first of all, this hatching technique, smaller lines. And then I'm just going to do the cross hatching over the top so it becomes darker. And then I'm going to just do her eyes, which are quite round, and you've got this kind of dark rim and her iris just there. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. If you notice, I'm not doing kind of straight lines all the time. So there's my eyes. Okay, there's my eyes. So now I'm going to kind of do a nose. And if you notice, it kind of goes around in a diagonal. So from her eye there, I'm just going to have it go around. And then it comes into this diagonal kind of space here. I'm going to make it round because her nose is quite round there. And at the moment, when you look at my drawing... If you do look at my drawing, I will try and make it darker so you can see. Okay. I'm kind of getting the nose part right. And then you've got this cross hatching here. So I'm going to cross hatch here. Showing her nostril. And I'm going to do the... First of all, start off with hatching to show this part of a nose shade in there okay so there's a nose so the next part i'm going to do is her lips i'm going to put this black line down in a bit but i just want to get the outline of her lips right so i'm kind of going to do this v shape here before I go down to meet the line there and make it quite a bit full of that side as well. Okay, and now I'm going to do this kind of black line that runs down the middle of her face. So to do that, I'm going to draw my line first of all, try and make it as, just doing it lightly first of all. Do it as close to a nose as I possibly can make it. I'm doing short strokes each time. So it runs to a lip there, then a lip, and then down, it kind of bumps and then downs to a chin. And don't worry if it's not perfect, you can actually, because it's so light on your paper, you might want, I might want to bring my chin in a bit more and then I can rub this section out in a bit. So this is where we're going to really use this cross hatching technique. So if you notice, I'm just going to do the lines going across first one way, one direction. 
because I really want that black line to stand out before I start on doing the other technique. We'll start going the other direction, sorry. Like so. Okay. And then that's basically her facial part of her butt of her face. I'm just going to adjust it. And this is where we've are uh, you can adjust it. If you do the small faint lines, you can actually adjust what you've done. So when you actually come to rubbing it out. It's a lot easier to say. So if you notice, I've made her face a bit lighter. And this is when, and now with sweeping movements, first of all, just get the outline of her hair. So her hair's quite kind of, thick quite wavy so it kind of goes off to the left here and this is the fun part because you can add these waves to it and then I'm just going to add her neck because that's important so I've got the waves of her hair there and then the rest of it you can shade and I want you to practice shading using your cross hatch technique or your hatching technique when you're happy with what you've done um please take a picture and send a picture of me of uh, your booty car to me uh, either on class dodo or attach it to google classroom of booty car using the hatching and the cross hatching technique I would now like you to use the Play-Doh that you've, the recipe is on Google Classroom, or if you choose not to do the Play-Doh, you can use cardboard, you can use egg uh, cartons, and I would like you to make a sculpture of Boudicca. Look on the web for some ideas to help you, uh, and I can't wait to see your sculptures and pictures of Boudicca. Don't forget to take photographs and send them to your teacher either by Class Dojo or by adding them to Google Classroom. That ends today's lesson for our topic. Now in next lesson we're going to continue our journey of finding out why uh, the Celts rebelled against the Romans and we're going to be finding out more detail about Boudicca and her revolt. I can't wait to see all of these pictures. Bye for now.